Hi guys, so let's have a look at learning how to trace objects in easy steps on the Windows PC desktop. It's faster and neater than vector converters and very satisfying and you don't spend hours trying to work out how to do it. Just jump right on Affinity Designer and let's go. So, oh, before we get going, can I urge you to take a moment to tap the subscribe option below this video. It's completely free and puts you under no obligation. It does, however, help me. I really appreciate it. If you've already subscribed to this channel, then I thank you wholeheartedly. OK, let's continue. So, getting right to it. Download the sample PNG file from my Facebook group, Robert Chalmers, or from my website. In the Facebook group, you'll see it under Files, and the address is in the description below this, uh, below this video. Then open the image directly in Affinity Designer. This is a typical PNG logo image, a motorbike logo in fact, a very common requirement. So let's trace it and end up with a lovely vector file you can use anywhere, and I mean anywhere, from the side of a building to a business card, because as you know, SVG files are almost unlimited abilities to expand or contract without losing resolution. Very nice. Now, for this type of work, you really do need a steady hand, or a steady mouse at least, Watch out for the Apple mouse. It zooms all over the place at the slightest touch. Hmm. A mouse is fine if you're doing this on the desktop, though. And, of course, it's what you really need. So first, select the Move tool. Hmm. Why the Move tool? Well, next, go to the toolbar and select View and Zoom to 100%. Position the image so you can see the L of Lee Fan. Next, select the pen tool. This is what we're going to use to draw the lines with. The default settings are fine, as they are just at them at the moment. Now when you open it up, you can see I've got one point there in the black line, the width, but when you first open Designer, you'll probably find that 0 0.2. And we're going to work our way around the perimeter of the letters with no breaks or restarts. You can't stop and start. Once you start the letter, continue going right around it. That's very important. Now, just the L is showing here. So, as I mentioned, set the stroke width to 0 0.2, regardless of what it might be now, and the color of the stroke to black. You can even leave the stroke point at the very thin default, if you like. Not zero, though. Zero is not a width. <laughs> Leave everything else the same for now. None of the caps, joins, or aligns, or the mitre. Just set the point at 0 0.2 and leave everything else. Easy as. Now, tap your pencil point carefully on the first top left corner of the L. Well, we're not talking pencil points here, because we're not drawing this. We're talking mouse cursors. So tap your cursor right on the top left, where the arrow is pointing to. Go to the next corner and tap again. You'll see the nodes appear as little dots. If it's slightly off, don't panic. You can fix it later. Work your way around the letter and when you get to the curve, simply add lots of little points as you work your way around the curve. This is where you need a steady hand. You'll see the, you'll see the line following your points. And you can even see it there. There's a little faint blue line going around. Now, select the Node tool in the toolbar. Make sure the Snap tool is turned off. It's really annoying. You can leave it on, but it's really annoying when it's on, because everything tries to snap to something else. Now you can carefully drag various nodes into place so the outline is as accurate as you can get it. You can even enlarge it more if you feel that will be more comfortable. Take your time with this so you don't have random strokes. For example, if you're going to put this on a t-shirt, you'll need to make those that zoom in fairly large because a t-shirt print will be fairly large. 
So even if you start your design on an A4 page, which is about t-shirt printing size, your A4 or US letter, make sure your letters, that your outlines don't have wobbly lines in them, because they'll show up on the t-shirt. Anyway, you know that. Now you can check your outline, just what we're talking about. What I like to do is set the colour to grey. RGB 235 right across the board. Tap the Use Fill Tool in the toolbar. You can now clearly see the original colour and see if your trace lines are not accurate. Use the Node Tool to make any slight adjustments and you can see there the black of the original outline, the background colour, is just peeping out from under the edge of the grey in a couple of places. Depending how accurate you want to be, you can adjust that so that you can't see the black. Only just can't see the black. Don't go too far outside it. Well, don't go outside it at all because that will really make your letter look a strange shape. Now you can set the fill colour to black. Then turn off the go to select and click on deselect. So you've got no dots showing there. And there's your print, exactly the same. Your letter L, exactly the same as the original. You can check your shape now. <coughs> Excuse me. You can check your shape now by deactivating the image layer, leaving only the letter L that you just created. So far, so good. Now let's complete the letters. Exactly the same process for all the other letters. So now we have the complete word. Some letters easier than others, but take your time. Seriously, take your time. There's no rush. Remember, if you want to go back and edit a letter, then select its layer and tap the Node tool. Now, let's move to the red graphics section. The Lee Fan part was not terribly difficult. Let's now look at the logo part that's made up of a red donut and three red L's. L for Lee Fan, I guess. Let's look at the donut part. With the base image selected so that it shows through, select the donut shape from the Shapes tool options. Select the tool and look down the list to select the donut tool. This is a really nifty tool, this one. Drag the donut shape out and adjust it to a near fit of the existing image. Now you'll notice there's a teeny red dot on the inner edge of the donut. That's a handle that you can use to adjust the width of the donut once you have its overall shape nearly covering the existing donut. Next, when you've got it ready and it's as close as you can get it, convert it to a curve. This is how you get it to be an exact fit because the donut you can't make fit. So, and it has to be a curve anyway because you're ultimately creating an SVG file. Select the layer that the donut has been created on and convert the donut to a curve. You can see over in the layers panel there, it's now a curve. The image is turned off here again for clarity. Now you can adjust the donut shape to fit the original exactly by selecting the node tool and adjusting the shape carefully and exactly. So make sure the donut layer is selected and select the node tool. Carefully adjust the donut and change its colour to the correct red colour. Here again the background image is turned back on so you can see the rest of the logo and you can see by the circles around there or the curves that the donut is an exact fit to the original donut because all the layers are on and everything fits nicely. The background this image is still turned on, so you can see the rest of the logo. Aha! Turn off the red donut you just created. You will see the outline of your donut over the original image. Uh-oh, something's wrong. You can now get even finer detail, because the original is not symmetrical, and you can adjust yours to fit. So you really can get really exactly accurate with your tracing. Take your time with it. The donut is now almost fully adjusted. 
you can see the edges meet up with everything. Although the curves layer is unticked or deselected, you might say, you can still see the nodes because you've got the node tool selected and you can still adjust those curves with the handles and the dots. So now for the three L's. That wasn't hard so far, was it? The three L shapes are created exactly the same as all of the letters on the lower half of the image. You can create them individually or create one and copy it twice and adjust each repeat shape to fit. That's a bit of a fiddle. It's probably just as quick to do each one individually. Both options take about the same time and are about the same level of difficulty. Although personally I found copying and pasting was a bit of a fiddle. Quicker in the end just to draw them, copy, uh, trace them exactly right from the word go. Now with the complete set of curves for the logo completed, we want it on a transparent background for use as an SVG suitable for cutting. You may have already started with a transparent background, so ignore this instruction in that case. Select all of the layers except the image layer. Go to the edit menu and select copy. Now what do you notice about that image on the screen you can see at the moment? That's from the iPad, and the iPad will give you a white background by default when you copy and paste. That's where this instruction is for. But we're on the P we're on the desktop PC. Now I'm not too sure about um, Windows tablets. You may get the same effect on a tablet. I don't have a tablet, so I can't say with any certainty. So select all of the layers. You can see all the layers selected there. Go to the edit menu and select copy. Save the image, exit the existing project, having saved it first, and create a new document, and then select New from Clipboard. You now have a new pack transparent background image to work with. Moreover, it's pure vector, ready for export. Now, don't be distracted by the iPad surround image there. That's of little reference. So really, tracing is relatively easy. Look at your original. Carefully work out what you have to do to duplicate the original image. Remember, photographs don't work well, but you can still trace a very good likeness of a person with some care, and you can shade it and colour it and things like that. Logos and clip art are relatively easy. And can you trace this one, for example? And thanks for watching. I hope you find it useful. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click on the thumbs up for a like and the bell to be reminded when new videos appear. I really appreciate it.